what is up gamers man first off i'm so sorry it took me so long to get this video out as i said in my last rant and rage video um i've been busy i've been working on the garage and um other things around the house taking doors off of their hinges and painting them and things of that nature all the stuff that an adult man has to do you know like i said in my re game responsibly video first and foremost you have to be a man and do whatever you gotta do and then you can game don't get me wrong I, I love gaming, dude. I've been playing gaming since I was like five years old on Nintendo 1. But you still have to do things as a man. Now, let's get to the review here. As you can see from the, the option settings and whatnot that I just showed you, this game is very bare bones minimum game. There aren't a whole lot of options here. There's obviously no multiplayer. There's um there there's nothing to really differ it from any other game that came out like ten years ago. <laughs> they they didn't really do anything with that. This game focuses solely on the story just the story alone not necessarily extras and all that goodness however I do give them points for doing an original story there's no other game out there that that plays any storyline similar to this that I'm aware of not that I'm aware of not on the PlayStation or the Xbox or the Nintendo Wii the the story that they kind of tried to do here is pretty original so kudos on that in murdered soul suspect you play a character named Ronan O'Connor who is a detective that was once a bad boy, turned his life around, and then became a cop, which, honestly, I'm not really entirely sure how that works, because I'm pretty sure if you're a felon, you can't be a cop. You can only be a snitch. <laughs> but, anyway, let's give him the benefit of the doubt here for the story. And you are tracking down a well-known murderer who is called the Bell Killer. Now, this Bell Killer takes you out. You are no more. You're dead. And the thing is, is you go through this game, and, and you basically can only manipulate things you can't really change anything but you can manipulate things and find clues that's the whole gameplay as a ghost or poltergeist whatever you want to call yourself you are trapped within limbo between heaven and hell stuck here on earth and you have to fix something about your life to finish it to move on as your dead wife tells you she's already on the other side you meet her for a little bit and then she tells you Blah, 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 you need to do this before you can come over and cross the other side, because we can't be together until you do. Unfortunately, other than somewhat of an original story, you there's nothing else to really attract you to this game. I'm sorry to say. Um, I owned it for about a week, and then I sold it. That's about how much interest I had in it. While going through this game, you meet others that help you with your skills and your tactics and whatnot, which there isn't really much tactic, honestly. But you pick up one skill here and maybe one skill there, but not exactly an arsenal of anything that you're going to be using. Now, you guys know that in my reviews, I try not to do a whole lot of spoilers because I fucking hate spoilers. So I'm going to try to avoid talking about anything that can give away the actual story. Because after all, that's all this real game really has is a story. Being that this is a detective game in which you are trying to solve your own murder... In order to progress in the game, you will need to find enough clues by simply looking at them or manipulating the surroundings to reveal them. And only then will they become available in your notes so that you can later use them to manipulate the minds of NPCs in a game that are also working to solve your murder. The only problem with this system is the game being, being so linear and storyline based that it is, is even whenever you make mistakes, there's no consequence for those mistakes. Only a score rating. That's it. They score you on whether you got it with no mistakes or not. However, making mistakes does not have any consequence. I repeat, none whatsoever in the entire game. Which makes it really kind of boring when there's not much of a challenge there. The only challenges this game really has are a small puzzle-like challenge to stall you from moving to the next place. Demons and soul potholes, as I call them. Let's talk about the mini puzzles, such as this one I'm showing you now. Though semi-clever in its attempt to confuse the player, when all you have to do is possess people to get over these potholes. It's still not enough to make you feel really challenged. Also, these small puzzles are way underutilized. Getting around demons is as simple as teleporting from soul residue to soul residue, or soul pockets as I call them, and using birds to distract them, so that you can take them out from behind with a mini quick time event. If you fail, they track you down and drain your soul with ease, unless you find another soul pocket to hide in until they have lost your scent. Still, boring.
About the only form of entertainment I really found solid in this game is actually in the NPCs. A lot of them have some pretty clever little stories, and they're kind of funny. Some of them even turn into little side missions, which aren't very good side missions. It's basically just looking for more clues and helping them figure out what happened in their death, or if someone was cheating on them and when they were alive. Little stupid shit like that. However, some of these NPC stories are pretty funny. Like this guy right here. Apparently he stalked this girl, and then he killed himself on accident while stalking her. And then now he is waiting for her to die so they can be together forever. So he's haunting her until she dies, hoping that, that they'll finally live together. Basically, he's a fucking freak. And there's a lot of interesting stories in here that kind of make you chuckle a little bit. But it's still not enough to justify a $60 price tag. Allow me to emphasize a little bit more. If it wasn't for the NPCs, I would have been a lot more bored playing this game. That's pretty bad when you can say that the NPCs' little side stories are more interesting to you than following the next clue on the next mission. And that's exactly how I felt. I felt more like I wanted to walk around and talk to the NPCs and hear their stories than to actually play the game itself. Boring, boring, boring. And once again, yeah, guess what? Boring. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this review up here because honestly there's not a whole lot more to say about the game. Other than the video clips, some of them are kind of cool, a little bit sadistic. The killer's kind of an interesting guy. The character you run around with, she's a sweet girl. She's kind of cute as well, not too bad to look at. Um, but other than that, there's not a whole lot more to say about this game. They could have, I feel they could have done a lot more things with it. I feel it was kind of lazy. I feel like it was not worth the $60 purchase. If I were you, I would rent it if they're interested in it. And then you can probably you can play through it within about seven or eight hours, I believe. It's a pretty short game. So if you can just buckle down for one weekend after you rent it from a video store, you're good. But by all means, avoid the full purchase tag of $60. Because you will regret it and you'll return it within probably a week just like I did. Now, once again, I would like to give these guys credit for originality. They tried something new that no one else is really willing to do. They even took Resident Evil and turned it into a uh, run-and-gun game like Gears of War because that's what's selling hot at the moment. I hate when gamers do that, or game companies, I'm sorry. I hate when they take a good franchise and they try to make it something else to try to compete with competition, and they just ruin the game. I can't wait for Resident Evil to go back to the old-school horror and not run-and-gun. So these guys, they tried something fresh, something new, which is good, awesome. I, I really love that you guys did that, but this game fails at entertainment, and that's what gaming is really about, right? Being entertained. So who knows? Maybe they can come out with another one that will be a little bit better. I liked your efforts, but you just didn't hit the nail on the head. I'm going to say this game is about a 4 out of 10. And I only say a 4 out of 10 because I did not find a whole lot of glitches or anything to make it unplayable. It was done well. And the graphics are okay too. They're not great, but they're not bad. So this game, if you find it used for like 20 bucks, it might be worth it. There are a lot of things to find in there, little trophies and whatnot that you can acquire. But other than that, I don't see much use for this one. I'm sorry. It's just what it is. Bullets out.